Well, hey guys, welcome back to Wasting Time in the Woods. This is not a body bag for a boa constrictor. And this is not one of your grandpa's old sleeping bags. Nope, this is the ARB 2.5 meter awning. And today we're talking about how we use it with this ARB Deluxe Room as an alternative to a rooftop tent. It sets up quick, stores down small, and does a great job of keeping the family warm, dry, and bug-free in the woods. Now, it can't keep the kids from complaining, but if you zip up the screen room real tight, it might just muffle the sound enough to enjoy one more beer by the fire. And with that in mind, let's go camping. Ooh, that's not bad, actually. <laughs> Noon beer. <laughs> All right, guys, today we are taking a look at our 2.5 meter awning and ARB Deluxe Room. Ever since we got our GX and started doing the whole backpacking from the car thing, we started to notice that everyone with an off road SUV seemed to have well, some sort of awning bolted to the side of it. And that makes sense because off road awnings give you a place to escape the elements that the whole family can fit under. You can convert a lot of them into shelters and some of them into full-blown shanty towns. I think I see a bike of mine in there. When you look at off-road awnings, you've really got just two main categories. There's the traditional single panel awning like our ARB here, and then you've got the batwing style awnings. The batwing awnings are great because they deploy super fast, but they're also a lot more expensive and a bit heavier than the single panel awnings like this ARB. The other thing we really loved about the traditional panel awnings is the ability to add a fully enclosed shelter to them. You can add walls to some of the batwing awnings, but I haven't seen any with a floor. We camp in Arizona where there are a lot of these things and a few of these. I need a floor to keep the riffraff out. Our main consideration for the awning was the ability to convert it into a shelter and we wanted the biggest one that we could get. To get the largest shelter, we needed to go with the largest awning. That's why we went with the 2.5 meter ARB here. ARB also makes a 2 meter and a 1.5 meter version, but they only make the deluxe room shelter for the 2 and the 2.5 meter versions, and they're matched to the awning size. The awning itself is really well made. Ours is, well, we're not really sure how old ours is, and that's because I drove seven hours round trip to pick this up off of a guy on Craigslist so I could save about 200 bucks. Now, if you're surprised that I would drive seven hours round trip to save $200, welcome to the channel. That feeling won't last long. The reason I was so comfortable buying used is that, well, these things are fairly bulletproof and somewhat repairable. The poles and sail track are made out of aluminium, the corner connectors are made out of ABS plastic, and the canvas panel itself is a high quality ripstop canvas. It actually held up to about 150 pounds of hail that accumulated on it during the storm that ruined my last family camping trip. That trip started with me loading up a 20 pound bottle of propane on my roof rack, which I almost immediately backed into the side of my garage. Don't worry, I fixed it. The awning is actually pretty easy to deploy by yourself. You can even make it work on a fairly windy day. You just unzip it, swing a couple side support poles out which hit your partner in the face, unroll the canvas and drop the legs down from the track they're attached to at the end. Put the side support poles into the track, guy it out and you're pretty much done. Now it's not nearly as easy to deploy as a batwing style awning, but it is totally doable for one person. If you do somehow manage to mangle it, you can replace the poles, the bag that it deploys from, and even the canvas itself. About the only thing that I couldn't find were the two extruded aluminum channels. Alright, now when it came time to mount it, I opted for this big steel ARB quick release bracket. Now, there's actually not much quick release about it because it requires a wrench to loosen two bolts uh, before you can remove it. Let me see if I can show you how it works here. Try not to spill my beer. So this mounts to the roof rack, to the truck, okay? And it's got this keyhole in it. So that's on the roof rack and essentially the way this works is that drops in there and then drops down. I don't know if you can, if I can get a close up and then we can see that. I might be able to zoom in and post, but essentially 
it only goes in the one way. And it requires a wrench. They should have made that slot like this so that you can flip the bracket over and mount it lower on a lifted vehicle. Patent! I, I call patent. That's legally binding, right? Now the awning goes for about 400 bucks when you can find one in stock and the brackets were another 90 bucks. Of course, by the time you watch this video, it'll probably be twice that price and back ordered six months. I'm kidding. It's already back ordered six months. All this is back ordered six months. What, you, what am I talking about? Now, if you want to transform your ARB awning into a sleeping room, you'll want to plop down another 300 bucks for this ARB deluxe room. I'm not sure what's quite so deluxe about it since it's essentially a nylon cube with a tarp for a floor, but it is a good option if you're short on space and want a big tent. You get an 8x8 tent you can fully stand up in that packs down to about the size of an old school sleeping bag. It sets up quick and stores down small because only the fabric has to store in the cargo area. All of the support comes from the awning. To deploy it, all you have to do is connect it to the front and back sail tracks of the awning and clip it onto the poles. It's got a huge front door that opens vertically to create another awning and another pitch of shade if you add a couple more poles. The other sides have double roll-up doors and the car access is through a large nylon panel in the back. It's a solid system that doesn't take long to set up at all. It's the size of a family tent, but since it's a giant cube, you get the full height all the way out to the edges, so the space is maximized and it feels really roomy. I think it's a really efficient system, especially if you already have an awning. Now, there are a few caveats. First off, your tent is attached to your car. If you had to leave in an emergency, you'd have to disconnect the awning and let the whole thing essentially fall over in the dirt. We took a recent base camp style trip out to the desert and to go wheeling during the day, we had to, well, we had to leave all of our stuff in the screen room. And then we just detached it from the awning and just kind of let it fall to the ground like a Jabba the Hutt blob of a tent in the desert. <laughs> Now, it was a little windy, so we left some boxes inside and on top, which weighed it down. So it worked, but I don't think that that would work very well in the rain. Overall, we love the setup. It's a great way to get some quick shade on the trail and a great way to sack out for the night with family. Be sure to hit like, subscribe, and share for more half-baked overlanding and camping gear reviews. And don't forget to stop by the comments section down there and tell me all the crap I got wrong about essentially everything I just said. We'll see you out there.